So let's do one of these metric unit conversions together. We're going to do a couple examples together. The only difference now is that our unit conversions are specifically dealing with SI units. Everything else is the same. Our method, our approach to these questions uh, uses dimensional analysis. What I have equals, sorry, what I want equals what I have times what I know. Okay, always the same. The difference now is that what we know are conversion factors are using metric unit conversions or SI conversions. And in the course, you are provided with a nice chart uh, that looks like this. And it's really it's taken straight from the lesson, but it gives you the um, uh, it gives you a chart that connects any base unit to all the different SI unit prefixes. So we've got mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, and micro here. And the base unit could be anything. It could be meters, it could be liters, um, it could be grams. And the prefix then up here at the top um, would go in front of that base unit. So in other words, if you were dealing with grams, your base unit would be a gram. And if we were looking at um, how many megagrams, we would write that as capital M gram G. Okay, so we can substitute in any base unit here and, and put the appropriate prefix there. So let's go ahead and, and we're going to use these uh, this chart in today in our um, examples, and you're going to use it as well when you do your questions. You have some other useful conversions for you on that chart as well. We're not going to use them in these specific examples, but as you do some questions in your Hubbard textbook and in the course, um, you aren't expected to memorize this information, but you, you should be able to um, reference it and use it correctly. So you can see here that some other important equivalences are noted, um, and they have to do with volume here. So for example, one meter cubed is equal to a liter cubed. Um, one milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. Uh, and a ton is equal to um, 10 to the 3 kilograms. Okay. Perfect. Let's go ahead and come back to our, our questions here. So here's our first question. How many millimeters are in 5 kilometers? So what do I want? I want to know how many millimeters. And that's what I'm looking for. It's equal to what I have, which is 5 kilometers. Okay, times by what I know. And the question is, can we do this in one straight conversion? So, so let's go ahead and look at our chart uh, to decide whether or not we can do this conversion in one simple step. And I can see that I am starting over here in uh, millimeters. Sorry, starting over here in kilometers. And I need to get over here to millimeters, so I cannot go there directly. I need to cross through my base unit, which in this case is meters. So let's go ahead and put that in. My base unit is meters. So here I'm starting in kilometers. Okay, there you can see I use my, my prefix K for kilo, and then I follow it by a small m to say kilometers. And I'm going to need to first convert to meters, and then in a second step, I'm going to convert from meters to millimeters, which is what I want. So let's have a look at the conversion factors that we're going to use in order to um, make this calculation. So the first one, uh, to go from kilometers to meters, the way this chart is written, okay, is that um, one one of the the units that you see at the top here, so one kilometer, okay, is equal to the number below it of that many of base units. So in other words, one kilometer is equal to ten to the exponent three meters. Okay, that's how we can read that. So the equivalence here is that the, the number below the prefix shows you how many of those base units is required to make one um, one of those prefix units. So one kilometer equals 10 to the 3 meters. Uh, down on the other side, the same is true. So again, one millimeter is equal to 10 to the negative 3 meters. By the way, you could write this out differently. You might think um, uh, 1,000 meters which is really the same as 10 to 3 meters is equal to a kilometer. Totally acceptable. Okay, There's always more than one way to write a conversion factor. Um, likewise, you could also say that 10 to the negative 3 kilometers is equal to a meter, and that's totally acceptable too. 
This is just, uh, we're just giving you one conversion factor to work with just to keep things simple. Okay? So for now, I'll use what's in my chart. But like I say, it's, it's okay if you want to write it in a different way that's also equivalent. Over here on the left hand side, I've got one millimeter is equal to 10 and negative three meters. And it would also be totally acceptable to say that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. In fact, that's the one I usually remember in my head. So um, either one is appropriate. But let's use, for now, we'll use the ones in the chart just to, to keep it consistent for you. So there's my conversion factors that I'm using. We'll go back and plug those right into our, our calculation here. So I've got one kilometer is equal to 10 to the 3 meters. And the other one I had was um, that 10 to the negative, negative 3 meters is equal to 1 millimeter. So there's my other conversion factor. So I can go ahead and plug these in. I could make a plan if I want to as well. And my plan is going to be that I'm going to go kilometers. Okay. Well, first I'm going to have to go kilometers to meters, as we, as we found out, into millimeters. And then again, I could take those conversion factors and put them right on top, right maybe right down underneath, underneath my arrows. Oops, I want to have to bring it down in a few pieces. Just move that one over. There we go. So then I'm ready to plug in my conversion factors. Let's go ahead and do that. So first one, five kilometers, I'm going to move into meters. So here I am. I'm going to put my one kilometer on the bottom, and my 10 to the 3 meters is going to go on the top. Cancel out your kilometers right away. Next step, we're going to go meters to millimeters. Again, I have to cancel out of meters, so I need to write my 10 to the negative 3 meters on the bottom of my conversion factor, so the meters cancel and the one millimeter is going to go on the top. And the only thing I haven't canceled is millimeters. I'm ready to calculate. So it is simply going to be 5 times 1,000 um, divided by 10 to the negative 3, uh, which is just like multiplying again by 1,000. And my answer is going to be 5 times 10 to the exponent 6 millimeters. Make that nice and clear. There we go. Now in Moodle, we're, we're um, asked to use a different format of writing scientific notation. So we write 5e to the 6 millimeters. And there's my answer. Let's do one more calculation here that's a little bit uh, trickier. And I chose this one on purpose because it's, uh, it's a toughie. And we are converting, uh, again, a rate, one centigram per milliliter into decigrams per liter. And I have to convert both the numerator and the denominator in my rate here. So this is definitely a trickier example of, of a metric unit conversion. So let's go ahead and set it up. And again, it's going to be what I want is equal to what I have times what I know Let me write what we know in red, just to keep that nice and clean. Okay, so my conversion factors, what I know, let's put them over to the side here. Okay, uh, so let's, and let's, and let's, before we do that, let's fill in our what we want and what we have. So we're wanting to get into decigrams per liter, and we're starting with one centigram per milliliter, so that's what I have, and I need to convert that. And I can see that that's going to require more than one conversion factor. Let's look at what we've got in our chart. So on the top, let's make a plan. I'm going to make a separate plan for the top and a separate plan for the bottom. So on the top, I can see that I need to go from centigrams to decigrams. Okay, let's see how that's going to work for us. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of our notes from the last question. Okay, so well, here we are. We're going from centigrams to decigrams over here. So I'm going to do one conversion to my base unit, which is going to be grams this time, and then another conversion over to decigrams. 
So the first uh, conversion factor that I need to use is that um, 1 centigram is equal to 10 to the negative 2 grams. Okay, and then the second conversion factor that I need is going to be that 1 decigram is equal to 10 to the negative 1 gram. So we'll go ahead and, and write those into our calculation. So I've got, so I can, all right, let me write that out. So I've got 1 centigram is equal to 10 to the negative 2 gram, and 1 decigram is equal to 10 to the negative 1 gram. So you could combine these if you wanted to, but I'm going to, I'm going to do the long process for you. So down here I can see that I need to, on the top of my calculation, uh, I'm going to have to go centigrams to gram and then to decigram. Okay, so there's my plan for the top and my plan for the bottom of my rate is going to be to go from milliliters into liter. And I can do that because liter is a base unit. So I can only I can do that in one step. So the conversion factor that I'm going to use for that one uh, is simply I'm going milli to the base unit. So I'm going milliliters to liters. And I can do that in one step. One milliliters, 10 to the negative three liters. Or you could say a thousand milliliters is equal to a liter. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, so one milliliter is equal to 10 to negative 3 liters, and we're ready to go. Okay, maybe to make this a little more uh, simplistic today, I'll number these conversion factors. Usually we write them over the arrow, but we could also do, do it like that. And there we can see I'm going to use conversion factor 1 first. Okay, and then I'm going to use conversion factor 2, just based on my plan. It doesn't actually matter. We could have converted the, the bottom before the top. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we're going to convert on the bottom milliliters to liters. So we're ready to go. Let's plug those into our calculation. So first one, I'm going to put in 1 centigram is equal to 10 to the negative 2 grams. And this time, I'm actually going to try just maybe pulling them right into our uh, calculation. So I'm going to put my centigram, my 1 centigram needs to go on the bottom here. And my 10 to the negative 2 grams from that conversion factor needs to go on the top. Okay, and right away I'm going to cancel out of my centigrams because they are gone. Now I'm in grams. Okay, next step I need to go ahead and convert um, from grams to decigrams. So I'm going to go ahead and I need to put my 10 to the negative 1. Oh, that one won't work for me. <laughs> I've got to write it in. Okay, so I've got my 10 to the negative 1 grams on the bottom. I need to cancel out. It has to be across from grams in the numerator. And my one decigram goes on the top. And right away you cancel out a gram. Last step is to convert the bottom over here. I need to convert mil into liters. So I'm going to use my conversion factor here. And my one mil needs to go on the top. And my 10 to the negative 3 liters needs to go on the bottom. So that I cancel out of my milliliters. I'm all done. All that I'm left with here is decigrams per liter, so I'm ready to calculate. So let's go ahead and do that. In my calculator, um, 1 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 10 to the negative 1 divided by 10 to the negative 3 is going to give me 1 times 10 to the 2 units of decigrams per liter. Excellent. And there's my final answer. In Moodle, we would write that as 1e e to the 2 decigrams per liter. Always keep your units in our answer.